Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be taking one step further into our division exploration as we uh, deal with larger numbers that we don't know off the top of our heads. Uh, in order to do so, we're going to learn a strategy called partial quotients division. We're in our math journals on pages 198 and 199, unit 6, lesson 4. Okay, so let's take a look at the instructions on the top of page 198. It says, estimate, write a number model with an unknown to represent the problem, then solve using partial quotients division. Okay, now the term partial quotients might remind you of the partial products strategy for multiplication. And as you and I know, multiplication and division are interrelated. So when I have a uh, multiplication problem, like say, oh, I don't know, 32 times 16. These are two factors that multiply together. I don't know the product off the top of my head. But I can use partial products to help break this down into more digestible chunks. Instead of multiplying 32 times 16, I'm going to multiply 30 times 10, and 30 times 6, and then 2 times 10, and 2 times 6. And then I just need to find my partial products. 30 times 10 is going to give me 300. 30 times 6 is going to give me 180. 2 times 10 is 20. And 2 times 6, of course, is 12. So then when I add all these together, I get a complete product of 512. My partial products added together give me my uh, final product. Okay, So that's what I'm going to do when I think about division. Okay, I'm going to use a, a similar strategy. Okay, Let's look at the first problem. It says, there are six pencils in each pack of pencils. How many packs can be made from 96 pencils? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide 96 into groups of six. Okay. So when I think about uh, 96, and I think about the number six, I try to think of what are some multiples of six that are close to 96. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, when we've been taught multiplication, we were given a facts table that looked kind of like this, and usually they only go up to 10. Okay, so the largest multiple of 6 I have is 6 times 10, which is 60. Okay, now knowing that, we're going to have to do some estimation to kind of get us close to where I think my answer should be. Okay, now 96 is a lot bigger than 60. Uh, 96 is actually closer to 100. Okay, so if I start with, say, 100 in mind, and I want to, say, come up with an estimation that's close. Okay, let's say I divide it by 5, because if I were to round 6 to the nearest 5, it'd be closer to 5 than it would be to 10. So my estimation here is 100 divided into 5 groups. Okay, well, if you know anything about money, you know that there are 20 nickels in a dollar. So for every five cents, that's one nickel. It takes 20 nickels to get to a dollar. So that means 100 divided by five, or in groups of five cents, would give me 20 groups, or 20. Okay, so that's my estimation. So I know my answer is going to be eh, around 20-ish. Okay, but now I have to do the actual division. Okay, now how do I do that? Well, I have to look at this number 96 and think about it in terms of parts. What is 96 built from? Another way to think about that is how many groups of 6 can I get out of 96 based on multiples of 6, okay? So I have my dividend in the house. This is called a vinculum. Uh, I'm going to just draw a line right here. And I know from my multiplication table that uh, 6 times 10 is 60. So I know I can get at least 10 groups of 6 out of 96 because 96 is bigger. So I'm going to write 60 underneath 96, my dividend. And I'm going to write the number 10 to the right of it. This is my first partial quotient. I can divide 96 into 10 groups of 6 at least. There could be more. That's why it's called a partial quotient. Now what I need to do is I need to subtract. What is 96 minus 60? Well, that is 
36. Now, 36 is bigger than my divisor, 6, so that means I can probably get more groups of 6 out of it. Okay? Now, 36 is also a multiple of 6, because 6 times 6 gives me 36, right? So that tells me I can get 6 more groups of 6 out of 96. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write 36 right underneath 36, like so. And then I'm going to remind myself 6 groups of 6 is 36 by writing this factor, 6, right here. In this case, it's now a quotient. Okay, I'm going to subtract the difference, and I'm left with 0. So now what I do is I count up all the groups of 6 I was able to pull out of this dividend, 96. Well, I got 10 groups, and I got 6 groups. Well, 10 plus 6 is going to give me 16 groups total. That's my combined or complete quotient. I took my partial quotient here and here and added them together. To give me 16 total. Okay, 16 groups of 6. Okay, so my number model with the unknown is 96 divided by 6 is going to give me an unknown of P for pencil packs. And how many packs was I able to get out? Well, I was able to get out 16. Let's try another problem. I'm going to jump over to number 4 on page 199. I'm doing so because if you notice, in my division algorithm right here, I'm dividing 96 again. Let's read the number story. It says, Mrs. Garner wants to divide all the fourth graders into groups of eight for a music program. If there are 96 students, how many groups will she have? Now, the first thing I need to do is come up with an estimation. Well, in my first estimation uh, for 96 divided by 6, I rounded 6 down to 5 and rounded 96 up to 100. If I use that same approach, I'm going to round 96 up to 100. I'm going to round 8 up to 10. So my estimation is going to be 100 divided by 10, which of course is going to be 10. So my answer is going to be closer to 10 uh, than it is going to be 20 like it was in my estimation for 96 divided by 6. Now I need to create a number model. So I'm dividing 96 into groups of 8. And that's going to give me something, uh, F for fourth graders. Okay? So let's look at the algorithm. All right? So again, I'm going to start by thinking, how many groups of 8 can I get out of 96 off the top of my head? Well, I know that 8 times 10 is 80, right? So that, I know I can get at least 10 groups of 8 out of there. So i got to subtract 96 minus 80. It's going to leave me a difference of 16. And, of course, I know that 8 times 2 is 16. So if I subtract 16 minus 16, that leaves me with no remainder. So when I go to add my partial quotients... 10 groups plus 2 groups equals 12 groups. There are 12 groups of 8 that I can get out of 96. Okay, so my answer is 12 groups. 12 is pretty close to my estimation of 10. Okay? This is starting to get a little bit trickier, isn't it? Okay, the numbers are getting a little bit larger. Our... Uh, attention to detail has to be a little bit finer and uh, there's a couple more steps than just consulting the multiplication table and finding the corresponding product okay so if this is getting confusing if you have questions or you just want to see these problems done again by a professional you need to talk to your math teacher they would be happy to help you if you need help okay I hope this video was helpful for you um, until we uh, speak again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.